A windy day for Boko. James and Mike were off to the station to collect their coaches. When they arrived, they stopped at the signal box where they where they found Porter. They asked him where his where where their train was. No, said Porter. I do not know where your where your train is. He said it's probably being shunted by St Stafford. Pish posh, said James. He's always making us wait while he's slow. He said. Yes, yeah, said Mike. Mike. We're all going to be late, and it's and it will. And it will not go on well. He needs to hurry up and... But Mike was rudely interrupted. At last, Stafford showed up and he shunted their coaches. Sorry, sorry you two, he said. I'm not really used to shunting coaches in the yard, he said. You... I don't know if, if I've even put the coaches in the right order. You guys better check, he said, and he raced off. But James and Mike completely ignored him. Pish posh, they both said. I'm sure the coaches are in the right order, said Mike. Just then the guard's whistle blew, and the two red engines puffed away. If James and Mike had been wiser engines, they would have checked if, if stuff had put the train in the, in the right order, but unfortunately they didn't. They were going on so well. They were going so fast that they even had to make it up the hill. They went up Shake Shake Bridge and through the bumpy track. And as it was so windy, James began to go faster and Mike began to push harder. Slow down, said their drivers. Said their drivers, you're going to cause a crash. Pish posh, they both said. But if they had paid attention, they would be, they would have been very careful. But then it happened. James found out that he was coming around the bend. Slow down, Mike, he said. What? He asked, but it was too late. James found himself off the rails and dangling down. Help! He cried. Mike, do something! I'm trying, cried Mike. He tried pulling as hard as he could, but it was no use. At last, fearless Freddy came to see what the problem was. He was coupled at the back of the train, and with his, um, his strength and Mike's strength, they pulled James back onto the rails. Oh dear, groaned James. No, I'll never get the train back to Marin Station now. I'm afraid you won't, said the voice. It was the fat controller who had just been on the train. James? He said, I'm sorry, but you can't pull the train like that with Mike, he said. You're going to have to go to the works and get your wheels mended. But sir, asked James, how long will I be at the works for? Just for a week, he said. It won't be long, and then your wheels and your front will be properly mended. The fat controller walked away, and James puffed sadly away to the works. Moments later... Mike had to take the train on his own, and he left. Later that, later that night, Mike, Mike steamed into the sheds where the fat controller was waiting. I'm sorry about today's incident, he said. That's all right, said the fat controller. While James is up the works, I'm going to send for an engine to help with the express. Thank you, sir, said Mike. But what's the engine's name? But the fat controller walked off and didn't reply. Soon Mike began to wonder. I wonder who will be taking the express tomorrow with me. He, he wondered and he went to sleep. The next morning Mike, Mike woke up. His driver and fireman were filling, filling, up, filling him up with coal well. His fire was on and he was, and he was finally having enough steam to puff out of the sheds this morning. He was out. And when he found Boko, he was surprised. Hello, Boko, he said. What are you doing? Hello, Mike, said Boko cheerfully. What, what are you doing here? I'm looking for an engine, said, Bo said Mike. He's, he's meant to be pulling the express for me today, he said. I'm that engine, said Boko. Come on, now let, 
Now let's be happy about it and collect, your, and collect those coaches for me, he said, and Boko roared off. Yay, said Mike sarcastically. I'll trust Boko to get, to, to get me to shun coaches in the yards like a tank engine, he said crossly, and he puffed away. Moments later, Mike arrived at Marin Station and found the, found the coaches, coaches there and buffered up to them. He wasn't in a good mood. Just then, he, he saw Rusty and Peter stand nearby. Look, said, said Rusty, there's the new tank engine. That's just Mike playing tank engine, laughed Peter, Peter Sam. Mike snorted at them and, and continued on. But whenever he saw some engines that teased him, they all laughed. Poor Mike began to, began to have a hard time. You look silly pushing the express like that, added Oliver. Oh, no, I'm not, said Mike. And pish posh about it, he said, and he, and he, and he puffed crossly away. When he arrived at the station, he buffered the coaches up to Boko and was coupled up. Come on now, said Come on now, Mike, said Boko. The passengers are on board now, as he heard the guard's whistle blow. Come on, young Mike, he said. We're going. And he, re and he raced out of the station like a rocket. But Mike didn't even want to go this fast. Wow, he said to Boko. Slow down. We're not. There's no time to slow down, said Boko. This, the express mustn't be late, he said. They even, they even raced through the through the sheds. Falco, said Mike, there's no need. Can you slow down a little? No time to slow down, said Falco. Let's go, Mike, or the express will be late and we will be blamed. Mike tried to warn Falco, but there was nothing he could do. Then the winds came again, and the two were in a, and the two were in a wild ride. They went through a tunnel, and they were ready to go up the hill. Can we slow down now, said Mike? All right, said Boko. Now's the time to slow down. And indeed it was. It was getting so windy that they could hardly open or shut their eyes. They heaved and they heaved as hard as they could. Mike and even Mike was trying his best not to let the wind defeat him. He even he started pushing the coaches so hard that Boko began to began to began to go side to side. Slow down, Mike! He cried. What's going on? asked Mike. But Boko. But Bo Boko's coupling snapped between the express and Boko went dangling, dangling off the rails and was derailed. Help! He cried. The wind's going to blow me. Oh dear, cried Mike. I'll help you. And he was, and he was more determined than help. He took the coaches out, he took the coaches out of the way. And he came back and and with the extra chains, he pulled Boko back on the rails. Thank you, Mike, said Boko. What would I have done without you? I'm sorry I was unhappy with you, said, said Mike. You were right to pull the express with me today. That's all right, said Boko. I'll be at the front. You pull the express. That made Mike feel very happy. At last, they were, at last, at last their agreement was done. With that, both the two engines were once again on their way to the other station with the express. Boko was happy to be back on the tracks again, and Mike was happy that he was able to help a friend in need.